Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another glorious week of the Don't Ask Me Why podcast, week 17. Hey, Rod, do you remember when week 17 used to be the last week of the NFL I season? I do. I, uh, unfortunately, I remember when week 14 used to be. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take it. Oh, hey, yeah, you're not, right. Not week 12, week 14, <laughs> I remember. No, it was a small child, you know, but. Um, oh, my God. But anyhow, I'm glad you brought that up. Oh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> my my yeah, bad. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, everyone, welcome. Week 17 of the uh, Don't Ask Me Why podcast. I'm Reggie. He's Raj. We're going to have another exciting, action-packed show. Uh, we have a, a, a special guest. Uh, can't wait to bring him in shortly. But before we do that, wanted to kind of recap uh, our picks from last week. As I mentioned last week, we are brick by brick, steadily getting yeah. better and better and better, getting back to our normal right. level of, 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 of supremacy. Uh, we were three and three. We were three and three last week. So the week prior, we were two, three, and one. We're three and three. So it's only right that we're going to be four and two at the very least this upcoming week. So that brings us to an overall record of 40, 38, and six, which keeps us at that 52% mark. Raj, how do you feel about that? Uh, I saw your picks. You saw my picks. How are you feeling about this uh, upcoming week? I'm starting to get a little bit better grasp, I think, on where where things are headed. And I always go back to one of my tenets for who I like to pick, especially when you get no bad teams, when you get toward the end of the year, it's like, who is the most desperate? And so uh, I liked on Monday, Christmas Day, this was well beyond our show uh, coming out last week. But on Monday, I played all the underdogs in a parlay and they all three. Mm -hmm they all three covered easily. And that's because they were the most desperate teams at that time. Case in point, Raiders, they were the most desperate to stay alive. And now they're really a force. And they're, they're loving playing for Coach Pierce. And I hope that he gets that full-time job out there. It's his time. They love him. Uh, the players do, and they got great things in store if if they keep the momentum going. It sounds like some foreshadowing of your picks for today as well. Could be. The dynamics change a little bit when you get toward playoff time and the teams that are still in the hunt and who needs to win the most. Even Baltimore, even the Ravens, who I picked as part of my parlay on Christmas Day. What was I doing making bets on Christmas Day? I don't know. But – they were apparently insulted by the odds makers making San Francisco a six point favorite. And they just went out and kicked some tail in San Francisco. You know, wasn't even wasn't even close. I'm not even gonna lie. I didn't think that would have been the outcome. Uh, I definitely thought it was gonna be a much closer game. I really thought the 49ers were gonna win. Uh, that was a a very very uh, powerful win by the Ravens. They needed that. They needed that to kind of separate themselves from the pack. Kansas City is looking so wounded. You can't count out Mahomes, but you, you, now it's starting to look like if the, the, the road to the Super Bowl will go through Baltimore, and, and it's going to be a tough outing for anyone who has to come up to Baltimore. I like uh, Mahomes. I like Kelsey, those guys, but they're losing their minds. I mean, two weeks in a row, like throwing helmets and all this crazy stuff. It's almost like they become, and I hate to say this, but it's almost like they become celebrities to the point where they almost feel like winning is is indoctrinated. You know, like, hey, yeah. look, look, don't you understand? I do all these commercials and stuff, and and we're supposed to win. This isn't supposed to happen. And when it doesn't happen to great pro athletes, they get pissed off and they start doing things that are out of character. So, you know. Their Q rating is certainly going down. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like you said, the behavior, uh, what you're seeing from Mahomes, he's looking a lot more whinier than than normal. Yeah. It, it, it kind of reminds me, not to go away from football, but it reminds me of the Warriors where they've had such dominance and then it seems like they're kind of falling apart at the seams as well. Yeah. So kind of a similar uh, situation. Again, another game that I did not see the Raiders uh, coming out with a victory at Arrowhead, but uh, it's all intriguing. Um, it's a lot that that's going to transpire over these next couple of weeks uh, to determine uh, playoff positioning. So I'm eager to see how that unfolds. Yeah. So without further ado, I wanted to bring in our special guest, uh, another former NFLer, uh, hailing from Alexandria, Virginia, uh, a T.C. Williams uh, High School Hall of Famer, two sports, I mind you, a uh, former t Maryland Terrapin great, uh, currently the CEO and, and founder of DMV Sports Group, and we're going to touch on that as well. And he's a former Indianapolis Colt. We're bringing in Coach Ratcliffe Thomas. And, and, and Ratcliffe, your Maryland Terrapins are playing Auburn in the Music City Bowl in Nashville. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you play in a bowl game while you were at Maryland? Unfortunately, we had some good runs, but we didn't quite make a bowl game during my tenure. Okay. I didn't mean to open up a wound or anything. <laughs> so my apologies. That's a horrible way to start the show off. Let, let's 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 restart it. No, yeah. my bad. But we're we're excited to have you. DMV Sports, you're you're prominently uh, rocking that uh lovely um uh hoodie. Uh, if you can give us a little more information about that, I have a nine-year-old uh, twin boy who who's played uh, flag football. He has the man to tackle uh, when we're up in uh, the DMV. So uh, we're down in Georgia. I'm looking to get him back into football. But can you give us a little more information about the DMV Sports Group? And it sounds like a great cause. So um, DMV spurned from the, um, the Rackham Thomas Foundation. We um, originally started out as a... Uh, a nonprofit foundation uh, mentoring at-risk youth. And somewhere along the way, I just decided to get back into my lane. Of course, that's sports. So the DMV Sports Group was, was born. We started out doing um, showcases like NFL-style combines for kids, middle school, youth, and high school. And then we got into uh, the All-Star Games. So currently, we have now um, the Gridiron Classic, um, All-Star Series, which is um, we have a, a huge youth game that we hold every year in April. Um, we have a Rising Stars game that's ninth and 10th graders, uh, All-Stars from the DMV area playing. Um, the youth game is actually, this year it's, it's more regional. It's spread up and down the East Coast. So uh, the East team will be like the DMV, Maryland, D.C., Virginia. The West team will be West Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Etc. The North team will be Baltimore, up Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, all those states. And the South team is based in North Carolina, but that's uh, Virginia Beach, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, etc. So uh, we're really looking forward to that in April. It's, it's building up to be a great event. We still mentor, but we we do it through sports. So we also do an all-season training program that we help kids uh, get bigger, stronger, faster. Wow. And we do a little one-on-one uh, -on -one positional training as well. The website is, is it dmvsportsgroup.com if people want to learn more? Yeah, yes. Uh, dmvsportsgroup.org. Um, dot dot org. Dot org. Yeah. I had a quick question for you on the on your uh, sports group, uh, Ratcliffe. When, when it comes to the younger kids, and first of all, we're talking about six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, right? So um, our, our mindset is, you know, kids are getting started in sports younger and younger. Right. Um, they, they're very involved. The parents have got them involved. We we set a big stage. So we feel like if the kids come, in, come into we, – we were based out of the St. James in Springfield, Virginia. Mm -hmm. If the kids come to that environment and play, there's – you know, they're not going to be afraid to step on any stage and play. Right. And that's the one kind of thing that the um, kids talk about when they play at our um, facility is that they feel like they're playing at the NFL stadium. Wow. I mean, that's that's incredible because, 
every kid, you know, when I was growing up, all we had was little league baseball, right? So uh, when you went to the park uh, as a little league baseball player, you did have that feeling. You did have that dream in your head that that you were really playing in the big game, that you were playing on the big stage. So that was kind of, you know, where my question was for kids that are coming into the, your program when they're like, say, six, seven years old, is kind of like, how do you how do you introduce the game to them? How do you indoctrinate them into the game of football at that tender of an age? So you, you will be surprised that these kids are very, very mature for their ages. Wow. Um, last year in, in our six under game, we had a kid make a play, came up make to make a tackle, actually stripped the ball from the kid and took it back about 60 yards. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. So so those type of kids, this will be their second year playing in that game. So they're going to be prepared. So we like to invite everybody to come out, but this is a true all-star game for kids that are playing at a high level. Right. Yeah. Maybe a star is born. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you can say it all over the field. It's uh, star power everywhere. And we we have kids that played in the game um, last year that are going on and doing uh, great things, going to uh, p- good private schools, good public schools. We have kids from the showcases that actually like top five in the country at their position. And they're only like, um, that was a couple of years ago, so there was eighth graders, so they're sophomores now. Wow. We had kids in the showcase in the eighth grade as freshmen getting power five school wow. getting offers from pop wow. schools. Yeah. So the eyes like the events that we throw, the eyes are on us um from the high school coaches to the college coaches to the families, the community, and hopefully next step the nation. Mm-hmm. Radcliffe, you you were a two sport athlete and I know that that's pretty a uh, common uh a lot of athletes in in prep in high school will 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 play in several um sports, a couple of sports. You excelled in two, uh, primarily in basketball and football. And not only that, but you played on both sides of the ball as well. Give us a little uh, background as far as your uh, athletic background and and being able to excel at high levels in in multiple sports and in multiple positions in one sport. And let me mention, I was decent at track as well. Hello. (laughs) My bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, my bad I credit it to the environment I grew up in um, I grew up around uh, older kids in a highly competitive environment so when I started playing organized sports at, at the tender age of 8 wow. I just always had a high motor and, and very competitive I like to compete I had a great mentor in my dad that sort of you know showed me the way I love the game I love football I love basketball and, you know, played it through middle school up into high school. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to college and have to spend a little time in the NFL. So just, I just accredited to uh, being highly competitive, you know, and not liking to lose. Um, you know, when you come from where I come from, you don't want to be the kid that lose. Yep, they get talked about bad. Understood, <laughs> understood. You touched on this uh, as far as your mentorship uh, with the DMV Sports Group uh, and also you know, teaching fundamentals and, and, and over the years, uh, the increased focus on concussions and, and, and the NFL and in the collegiate level has heightened and CTE and the focus on that. Uh, how have you all been, uh, adjusting or teaching, uh, new techniques on, ch- on tackling for these younger, uh, uh, players? As the youth become bigger, stronger, and faster, and the, the high levels that you go up and playing football, the impacts become more violent. Mm-hmm. Um, so we always try to teach the kids when they tackle, to see if they tackle, to keep their eyes up. Um, coaches that in our program, they usually take the USA football training. So we make sure that we're teaching things the right way. Um, I know we, we had talked about how um, parents, you know, was reluctant to put their kids in sports and stuff like that. So it's very important that, we teach what we're doing in a safe manner to make sure that the kids are protected and also building your body, working out and, and getting yourself prepared to play the game. You know, sometimes those injuries come from not being prepared. So we want to make sure those kids are prepared. They, they're doing things the right way. And like we talk about with the rules that they are these days, 
uh, putting your head down and things like that. You know, we got to keep our head up, keep our eyes up and seeing what we tackle and make sure that, you know, we're safe. We keep everybody safe. We have a great game and uh, no injuries out there on the field. Awesome. You excelled in a pro level. Uh, you were a special teams captain uh, with the Colts, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Um, my t my tenure was uh, my my first year was Peyton Manning's first year. Uh -huh. The year the year the coach drafted Peyton Manning, and Peyton Manning was there. Marvin Harrison was there, and a whole other host of great great athletes. Mm -hmm. And then the next year they brought in Edgerrin James. Mm. So the big three was born, and I was I was there. I was a witness to all that. I was fortunate enough to um, become one of the team captains on the special team side. I consider that an extreme honor playing with those great athletes. And one thing that people don't realize about when you get to that level, everybody's great. Every single player on the team is great. Um, I always tell the story about my my punter, Hunter Smith. Mm -hmm. He was an all he was an all state quarterback. <laughs> he was the, he was the best quarterback in the state. Yeah, and he's a punter. Yeah. So it's uh it's, it's definitely um playing in the NFL. It's definitely something that I was absolutely fortunate to do. Um, you know, honored um to be a part of those those coach teams in the late late nineties, early two thousands. Um, it was a great experience. Yeah. What mm -hmm. a what a what a struggle to have had to have played with, you know, average talent like uh Peyton Manning and Edgar and James and <laughs> you know, Marvin Harrison. Well, I, I tell you what, tough um, times. guys like Peyton, they're like machines. And like I talked about, I was always highly competitive and I, I thought I knew what it was to be the ultimate professional and to work hard and to go hard until I seen this man. He did not leave the facility. He <laughs> didn't. When I got there in the morning, he was there. When I left at night, he was there. And you could see the jump from his first year to his second year, how he improved. And just watching guys like that is, is it's inspiring. Yeah, you know what I mean. And 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 you talk about greatness. That's the, and and that's how yeah how you become great. Now, did you stay uh, even to this day? Have you stayed connected with any of the guys you played with uh, at the pro yeah. level? So we you know we have golf outings. We have different things at the Super Bowl. And I try to stay connected. Try to you know go to certain events. Um, you know, I have some of the guys come in to some of our events and I speak with the kids. Um, we had um, Anthony McFarlane, the Pittsburgh, or current Pittsburgh, still in now. He came and he was like a 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four guy. So at our last combine, he was actually practicing with the kids on their starts and their running form and things like that. So when you go go to these events and you have proven people like that, people that are actually don't currently doing it, yeah. it's, it's great. Now you could go home and watch him on TV like, hey, that guy was just training me in the 40. Right. He gave me this tip. He gave me that tip. So I'm happy that the guys come back and help out and uh, reach back out to the youth. That's great. I wanted to touch on a little bit your pre-NFL uh, career, right? So, you know, we'll kind of we'll kind of we'll go backwards in time. Uh, you know, at Maryland, of course, you were – uh, you know, third leading tackler, I believe, in school history. Named to the freshman All-America team at Maryland. You started every game when you played at Maryland. And before you got to Maryland, you went to Hargrave Military Academy. Now, oddly enough, we interviewed Ty Drakeford, who played for the 49ers, uh, along about the same time you were playing for the Colts. He went to a uh, military academy himself. Uh, before he went to uh, – Was that Fort Union? Fort Union. Fort Union. Yeah, before he went to Virginia Tech. So he talked to us a little about a little bit about that transition and that stop along the road um, in a very positive way. He, he wasn't there long. He, he, you know, he didn't want to necessarily go there, but, but he realized years down the road that it was one of the best things that he could have done. How do you look at, at your – experience with Hargrave military and how that may have prepared you for bigger and better things. It's sort of an interesting story. Um, how, how I ended up at Hargrave, you know, I was a highly recruited guy coming out of high school. And like you mentioned before, I was playing football and basketball mm -hmm. and I never could make my mind up. 
Um, so I actually accepted a, a basketball scholarship to the University of Maryland first. Ended up playing summer league. It was a little different playing on the college level than it was at the high school level. Right. Um, had an opportunity to play in the all-state game, the football game. Right. Interestingly enough, at the end of practice that week, I had a great week of practice. All the guys were standing up and, you know, they were saying, hey, my name is Bobby Johnson. I'm going to VTech. Hey, I'm going to so-and-so. I'm going to Ohio State. And I say, hi, my name is Radcliffe Thomas. I'm going to University of Maryland for basketball. And everybody just sort of looked. Right. So the coach came up to me after the game, was like, hey, is your parents come to me? I'm like, of course. He was like, you know, mind, you mind if I talk to him? I was like, hey, I thought I got in trouble. I got, I thought I got caught sneaking out of the dorm or something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we go on to play the game. I had a great game, ended up getting defensive MVP of the game, having a great game. And then, you know, the coach, I think it was Coach, uh, coach Smith from the Hampton Crabbers that was coaching this. He was talking to my dad, and I'm sort of just listening in. And he said to my dad, hey, um, I heard your son is going to college to play basketball. And dad was like, yeah. He was like, well, I'm sure he's a heck of a basketball player, but, sir, if he plays football, he has a shot. Mm. He mm. has a shot. And mm. I got an idea. Uh, I got two uh, military academy prep schools. He can go there next year. He can get recruited for football all over again. Mm -hmm. So he told us about Fork Union and he told us about Hargrave. Hmm. And he has such a strong connection with those schools. Um, that next weekend, man, my dad was on the road. We visited Fork Union first. Mm -hmm. And we got there. It was uh, sort of still in the morning time. It was still a little gloomy. Um, it was, you know, it was an eye opener. Military Academy. You got barracks. And, you know, we, we did the whole tour. So by the time we drove down, probably about a couple of hours away to Hargrave, it was the afternoon. The sun was shining. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything, yeah. everything, everything just sort of looked more welcoming and more cozy. <laughs> yeah. um, so, needless to say, I ended up picking Hargrave right. to um, to play football. And uh, and and like Tyrone uh, Drake for talked about, it was a amazing experience. Um, I was a young kid that really never been away from home. So it gave me a sense of independence being that far away from home. We was on the North Carolina line, right in Chatham, Virginia. It it forced you to become a student athlete right. because things change. We had yeah. study hall every day. We had a schedule that you had to keep. We had military drill. We had a certain way we had to keep our rooms. They had to be able to come in the room and actually bounce a quarter off your bed. <laughs> like they, they, they taught us all these, like all these things. And, and, and I was a good kid, but I think Hargrave really like instilled the discipline in me and made me understand that, you know, you got to work for everything you get. It was a great experience at, Har at Hargrave and Hargrave had been existing several years when I got there. They never beat Fork Union. Fork Union was the big bully on the block. They had all these kids that went there with the pro and college and this, that, and the third. And so we were the first team to beat Fork Union. So that was sort of like a big deal. I actually caught, I talked to my uh, old coach last week. And he, 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 he still, he still talks about that game. Um, but going to Hargrave, like people didn't really understand what prep school was. It's so it's like a, an extra year of high school to help you academically to grow uh, physically, maybe maturity, whatever your story may be. Um, so we played like Virginia Tech JV. We played North Carolina JV. Yeah. Mm, we played yeah. Ames Madison JV, Marshall yeah. JV. So we played against college athletes. Right. So that, that really gave me the opportunity to see what the speed of a college game like a long time before I actually stepped on the college campus. After going to Hargrave, so my stock sort of rose and I got recruited by everybody all over again. It probably so even more the <laughs> UCLA's, the Florida States, the Miami's wow. and all, all the local schools. And guess what? I was homesick. I came back to Maryland. <laughs> Man. Good for you and good for them. You know, when you were talking about all that experience there, I, I kept, it kept popping into my head. It was like, Man, you should have gone to a military academy when you were that age. I could have used that. 
that discipline that when I was like 17, 18, that's exactly where I needed to be. Yeah, you like you like serious discipline. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely changed me as a person. Like I said, I, I was always a good kid, a good, respectful kid, but I probably lacked that discipline. We were in school like we were already in college. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like yeah. we had times for everything. We go to class, after class, you got military drills or you got practice. Right. After practice, we go to mess hall. After mess hall, every single night, we go to study hall. On that whole campus, you can hear pin drop. You can hear pin drop. They're walking around. They're observing us. We're in our barracks. After that, you get about 10 to 15 minutes to, to uh, wind down. Lights out. Mm. Lights yeah. out. And meals in the morning time, right, we yeah. have to be in formation to march, march to every meal. Yeah. So mm. there's no sleeping in. It's, it's yeah. if you want to eat, you better get up. Yeah. If you miss formation, you're late, you're late. The second thought, so. it might not have been a plan for me, but uh, <laughs> but here here's a question for you. At Hargrave, who were some other guys that went on to do great things, like in college, that you played with at Hargrave and into the pros, maybe? If we had 50 guys on a team, I would say 45 with Division One. Wow. wow. Like most of the guys that came to Hargrave, they was already sought after from the high school. So whatever their reason was, they were there. I don't know if anyone from that class made made pro. But from Hargrave, Tory Holt went to Hargrave. Mm. There's several other guys that went pro, like through the tenure when Hargrave had postgraduate football. Yeah. But Tory Holt was probably the biggest name. I think he came the year after, the year after me. Yeah. And he's a Hall of Famer now, isn't he? In the NFL? Yep. Tori Holt? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. You know what? I, I have a question. I have a question. If uh, the coach didn't call your father over and, t and, and say, hey, I think, <laughs> I think he has a, a bright future in football, and you would have just stayed the course with basketball, finish that sentence. If I stay the course at basketball, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I adapt to the D1 college level. I don't know if I just go and have my get a good four year education and go off and get a job somewhere. Okay. I'm not I'm not sure. Um I just I just knew that D1 basketball was a different story than high school. <laughs> it was a total mm -hmm. different story in high school. I mean, I played guard, I played the one and the two. In high school, but when I when I, my team needed a rebound, I could go down there and get it. Okay. In, in D in D one, you could forget about that. Right. <laughs> you know, all, all bounce out to you or something. Right. Was, you know, so you know, you never you, you never know. You never know what would have happened. But I tell you what, I'm glad. I'm absolutely ecstatic that he did, and yeah. it sort of it changed my course and we stuck with football. And so, and now I'm here, uh, giving back what I know to uh to the next generation. And how great for you to have had, you know, such an inspiration and a mentor in your dad. You know, I mean, so many kids just don't have that. And you had a dad that was so behind you, so committed to you. And ultimately, it sounds like kind of steered you in the direction that you ended up, you know, really uh, excelling at the highest level. Absolutely, man. And I'll be honest, it may sound cliche, but I credit everything to that guy. You know, he's, you know, God rest his soul. He passed away, uh, transitioned a couple of years ago, but he was, he was my best friend, but he, he made sure I was doing what I was supposed to do. And the thing about it was, as a young man, like, you know, you start to think, you know, a little more than your dad, a little more than your parents, you, right. you know, but he would take the time to explain to me. To make to make me understand why we was making this decision, why we was doing this, why we were working out a little more, why we were doing this. So that was great. And I know for me, without that, you know, I wouldn't accomplish the heights that I did. So that spurred everything I'm doing from the mentoring program to the DMV sports group and giving back to kids. So I will bet you right now, today, I probably mentor 30 athletes. Mm. that I talk to on a regular basis, mm -hmm. anywhere from, like you talked about, six years old to kids that are in pro. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are, are in pro. I I, I had uh, Keith Bogans. I coached basketball one year. Kentucky. Bogans, Chicago, Kentucky, Chicago Bulls. Yes, when sir. I was in Indianapolis, he was at Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So I should go down yeah. and see his games. Um, so just, you know, knowing how important it is to have somebody in your corner, somebody, a, a different voice, maybe sometimes than your parents, that somebody right. like, you see that they achieve, so they might listen a little more. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We always say the name draws the men, but the message is the same. Mm-hmm. Hard work, dedication, school, things like that. You know what I mean? So I, I just think that mentorship is very important. And I think everybody needs a mentor. Always, even, even us as men, we mentor each other as we talk to each other. You know, and as of right now, um, my mentor is a 90 year old young man in Alexandria that he's he's been sort of my mentor even when my dad was alive. He's he was my mentor the last 10 years. Wow. You know, I mean he helped me with the foundation. He gave me advice. He's an excellent businessman and things like that. So wow. now I had to transition all the things on the field to off the field. Yeah. So people just see they see the showcases, they see the all-star games. But they don't really see the all the organization, all the hard work, all the different things that goes into it. You know, what I mean, the, just keeping your website up to date. Yeah, it's, you know yeah. things like that. You know what I mean. So um, yeah. I believe strongly in mentorship, and I never turn anybody away. And if somebody, if a parent called me and asked the question, I stop what I'm doing. I try to ask the question if they need me to, you know, talk to their kid, things like that, because I know how important it is. Yeah. It could be a conversation that changes a young man's life. You know, yeah. and, I, and I take I take that very seriously. You know, so I'm just yeah. happy that God put me in position to, you know, give back, especially to a sport that that allowed me to live such a, a wonderful life. I, you know, mm-hmm. so you know as it's it's almost I feel like it's my duty to do so. Absolutely. Paying it forward is always important, especially like you said, when it is uh, gifted you with so much um, in, in your life. Mentorship is a common theme, and you've coached. We talked last night. You have aspirations of coaching uh, potentially in the future at, at uh, higher levels, and and just based on your work ethic and and what you've uh, explained to us and what we've observed, uh, it seems like that's just a, a, a matter of time. But I wanted to ask a question regarding. Uh, Black coaches and minority coaching as a whole on a collegiate and pro level. So right now, uh, 15 out of the 183 D1 uh, college coaching position for head coaches, only 15 are black coaches. And Mike Loxley, a friend of yours, from what I understand, is one of those 15. And in the NFL, it's four out of the 32 and one of the four being interim (laughs) right now. My apologies. <laughs> so uh, my question is, you're working with the DMV sports groups. You have a, a team of coaches who are black minority coaches who are mentoring, who are coaching. And and and, and I'm sure they have aspirations of, of growing coaching. What are some of the things that uh, you're doing right now uh, that could remedy what we're seeing on those higher levels and collegiate and pro sports to have a little more uh, balance from a uh, coaching standpoint? Um, I, I think it's important to have, you know, more minority coaches on the collegiate level and pro level. It's important for the athletes to see somebody that reflects like who they are. But I just, I just think more importantly, I just think black, white, brown, green, good men, good leadership. And I think that's about so I think as time goes on, I think that issue will remedy itself. Okay. It will. It will. Um, because, I mean, it's a lot of talented minority coaches out there, and they will get their opportunity. They got to make the best of their opportunity. It's a hard thing to break into, right? So for me, since I was in the NFL, so I have an in, right? right. So what if you never coach in the NFL, right? right? So you, you have to – Start at a GA at college or a high school job and, and build your way up. It, yep. it can take a lifetime. You know what yep. I mean? So I think the, the system um, doesn't make mistakes in that aspect that 
the men that are at the top at this present time supposed supposed to be there because because the, they've earned it. Mm. They've earned it. But I think as far as minority coaches go, it, it'll remedy it'll remedy itself. It'll yeah. remedy itself because you see now um, a lot of minorities in the front offices, men, uh, black men, even women in the front offices. Yes. So I, I think over time, as we transition, as the country transitions into all the different things that we have. It's a different time now. So things things will, you know, things will get better and people will get the opportunity. Cool. Cool. Speaking of um coaches, uh, there's a, a pretty um notable coach from the movie, Remember the Titans. You touched on that, and there's an interesting story behind that as far as this your introduction to the coach and not necessarily knowing who he was. And Absolutely. how a relationship blossomed from that. Can you give us a little more on that? So we're speaking of Remember the Titans. Everybody's seen the movie, probably the best sports movie Disney ever made. Um, and it's about my former high school, T.C. Williams. Um, and the star of the movie, this side of Washington, is portraying Herman Boone. And um, Herman Boone and the, the sister, Bill Yost. I didn't, I didn't talk about Bill Yost, but I will this time. And that's the that's the other coach. So it was a black a black coach and a white coach. And it was all about the tension of racism back then, uh, back in the seventies. Um, so growing up in Alexandria, I was destined to go to CC Williams. I ended up having driver's ed class, um, probably around ninth grade, whenever you have it. So I had this, you know, old grumpy guy, nice guy, but <laughs> just a grumpy guy, you know. Yeah. Um. Then one day he says, "Hey." I heard you play football. I heard you pretty good. I'm like, pretty good. So I'm like, yeah, you, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. And I'm like, all right, thank you, sir. Cool. Thanks for your information. <laughs> I had no idea who he was. <laughs> so uh, I go to the next year. I become a sophomore at T.C. Williams, actually in the school. And that same grumpy guy was my gym teacher. Mm. Right? So I started as a sophomore, like one of the few sophomores to start. And he would. At the gym class, all be pulled to the side, like, yeah, I watched the game. I saw you the game. You should do this. You should do that. I'm not just listening to him. And it, it was giving me good information. But, you know, I just thought it was, a, you know, a guy that liked football that, and talked about it. And, um, you know, and he was a great teacher. And I had him that year. And I go on. Um, fast forward, I'm in my second year uh, with the Colts. And so I still hearing about uh, Remember the Titans. They're making a movie about your school. Like, wow, I got to go check it out. So maybe like the first weekend it was out, I go to the movies. I'm sitting there at the movie. I got my popcorn. I'm ready to watch the movie. <laughs> so, you know, Denzel Washington is coaching, and it's, they start talking about Herman Boone. They start talking about Bill Yost. <laughs> I know those guys. <laughs> so Herman Boone was the grumpy gym teacher that's always pulled me to the side. And talk about football. Mm -hmm. And just sitting there watching how his life played out on a big screen, like one of the greatest high school coaches ever. Wow. Right. I was sitting there like st sort of starstruck. Right. And Bill Yost. Bill Yost actually came out of retirement and was the special teams coach. So I used to come out and practice every day and return punts. And Coach, and coach Joseph was a great guy, great man. Always talk about football, a great coach. It's just watching those guys on the big screen and, and my my school on the big screen, man, I was ecstatic. So immediately after the movies, I pick up the phone. Somebody give me Coach Boone's number right now. Wow. Right? So I finally get in contact. <laughs> yeah. I said, Coach Boone, man, why you didn't tell me you was Coach Boone? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So right. Like, hey, right. you, you know, so he's he's a real humble guy, and um, you know, and uh, we had fun, and, and and then we actually, you know, became good friends. Did some golfing, even when I went back uh, the TC, and I coached there for a couple of years. He's always served as a mentor, and it was just an honor to know him before he passed on. Um, you know, it was it was just cool seeing you know, my school that I went to portrayed in that way, and like in the backdrop of the story, because you never know. Like when you when you go to a the institution, you know you never really know that you hear things, but you really really never know the history of it. Right. Right. 
So it was like amazing story. And it, and it almost spoke to the aspect why we were such a good team and how they did their system by combining middle schools and all-star teams together to create like a mega high school. I told you, Ratcliffe, I told you last night when we were talking, I said, I said, I used to go there to games because I had a kid that was a friend of mine that played there in the 90s uh, after you. And, um, and, you know, this was along about the time that Remember the Titans was, was a big deal. And you could feel when you – I would go to games there I, on Saturday afternoons uh, down in Alexandria at TC. You know, you could almost feel, you know, the, sort of the passion that the program had at that point in large part because of that movie. But if I were you, I would have almost wanted to have a little bit of fun with Coach Boone, you know, when you started talking to him about the movie, you know, like saying like, Coach, the only thing is, is that I don't see a whole lot of similarity in your looks and Denzel Washington. <laughs> you know, I, 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 don't, I don't quite catch how they pick Denzel <laughs> to play you because I've seen pictures of you from back then and I don't see it. So, Rogers, I, I just tell you what, man, like, um, going, I was just fortunate to go to a school like like T.C. Williams, and like you said, right. the how back back in the 90s, it was, you know, all respect to Alexandria City, they call it yeah. now, but back in the 90s, it was just different. So we went to um, Alabama game. Like, if, if you've never been to a SEC college football game or a college football town, you're missing out. There's no NFL stadium that rivals SEC football. Just forget about it. Right. Um, so it almost reminded me of that time when we were in high school because um, during that time in the city of Alexandria, they had recreation centers. And Alexandria isn't but so big. We probably had 10 recreation centers. So that was the time that you played football outside and all the kids – played for their specific recreation centers, and we used to have battles growing up in youth league. It's not like now, now with travel football, people are traveling all over the place. It was like you played in your neighborhood. So right. the so what they did, they took all the recreation teams, split them down the middle. Half the kids went to a, a GW, junior high school. Half the kids went to Hammond. And you heard that name in the mm -hmm. movie, Little mm -hmm. the Tights. So yeah, they moved yeah. made him in a middle school. So now yeah. you have two all-star teams at the middle school level, mm -hmm. right? And we had all our wars, football, basketball. And then in 10th grade, back then you start a high school in 10th grade, 10th through 12. Yeah. All right. kids together. And that was the secret sauce of why T.C. Williams was as dominant as they were for years. They had that secret sauce until – um, that this new thing of travel football and creating these teams like so there's no more recreation centers. There's no more like they have only like I think one uh Alexandra Titans. Right. And it's so now like the kids are getting pulled here and there, they're going to different teams. So that that sort of system sort of is not in place anymore. So I, I did, you know, plenty of research. I I actually saw a quote from 1971, where the president at the time, Nixon, said, quote, unquote, the Titans saved the city of Alexandria. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, we, we and, hear those stories of how that the whole city got behind black, mm -hmm. white, got behind the football team, which before that time, it was a racial divide. Stay on this side, stay on that side. That they right. sort of got behind it, and as when I came along, we we felt that we definitely felt that. I remember my junior year in high school, we were eleven and zero, ranked eighth in the country. Everybody just knew we were gonna dominate states. Like so, we were playing against a team that we had beat twenty eight nothing during the year. Uh, Annandale, we were playing against Annandale, and we had already beat them. And whatever happened, we ended up losing the game. When I tell you a city was mourning, I'm talking about you could feel like how, the, how sad the whole city was. And that was just 
the type of atmosphere that it was at uh, T.C. Williams at that time. Lived and died with it, right? Yep. Hey, Ratcliffe, when they do the movie, and they will do the movie of the Ratcliffe Tum story, <laughs> who, who, who in Hollywood would play you? You can't play yourself. Absolutely can't. So I'm always, I pride myself on being a quick responder and, and being quick with it, but you hit me with a stumper, bro. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Denzel to come. Yeah, let's pull know. Denzel off oh, the bench. Denzel a little too old. <laughs> <laughs> um, Denzel's yeah. son. What's his name? Uh, John David Washington. How about Ice Cube's son? How about Ice Cube? <laughs> oh say no no but um okay yeah. okay yeah 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 Absolutely, man so that i mean that that'd be you know um you know dmb sports group is about you know um carrying on my dad's legacy and okay. hopefully my legacy one day and if i ever get to the point that you know if they want to be portrayed uh i'll be absolutely honored and humbled um you know um just like when when they when they retired my jersey at TC Williams, um, out of all my athletic accomplishments, out of everything, and and you know I I've had you know some luck, um, but them retiring my jersey and them inducting me in the um, Alexander City Hall of Fame, I I would say are two of the you know, top honors I've ever received. And that was the same year that Coach Boone was inducted as well, right? Yeah. So yeah, ab absolutely. So Coach Boone, we had, we got pictures. Coach Boone was there. Um, it was it was a great time. And then the class that I went in with was like awesome. Like Coach Boone and, and a couple of great guys. It was like, like I said, like to, like I'm going in the Hall of Fame with the guy they just made a movie with about. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, it's yeah. sort of real. So did your relationship with him from the time that, you know, you started reconnecting after Re Remember the Titans and then, you know, in the last few years of his life, after being inducted into the Hall of Fame, did, did you guys spend much time talking together um, yeah, so in we, those we, last we, years? We spent a lot of time on the phone. Um, I know when I was coaching, he would come out to like 707s. It's just, you know, you know, come out sometimes and, and chat with me. Um, so it was just, you know, just like I say, he was, he was a great guy. And like it, at that time, it was just a lot of great men in Alexandria, you know, that, that, that really, you know, like really drove the mentoring piece home for us. You know what I mean? Like we had you know, principals, coaches, uh, people in the city and in the, in the recreation departments that were, that was like great men, you know what I mean? So just happy to be a part of it, happy to be a product of it. Yeah. You know? So, and I just, you know, try to honor them with keeping the tradition going and, um, you know, doing our thing. Coach, um, it's been a, a pleasure just learning about you and what you're doing. And, and we pretty much establish you as a, as a friend of the show, uh, whether you like it or not. Whether you reciprocate that friendship or not, you are, you are a friend of the show, and we definitely will keep an eye on just uh, the program, and we we fully support it. Uh, DMV Sports Group dot org, and we will make sure that those details are uh, uh, listed on uh, the bottom of the screen as well as in the description of the show as well. Uh, before we let you go, uh, we wanted to we we do our uh, pick six. Raj and I do three picks each. We wanted to uh, defer to you, give the floor to you. Uh, what's your what's your pick? Your your surprise pick uh, of the week that we can throw in tandem, you know, with our picks. Don't mess up our don't don't mess up our record. Our record has been been I right. don't don't come in here messing us up. So here's the thing with the NFL. The NFL is so tricky, so up and down, so full of surprises. And we yep. know every single week there's going to be an upset. We know it, but we're scared to pick it. Mm. This week, I am not scared. Ooh. I'm not. Uh -oh. I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. Definitely covering over the Philadelphia Eagles. But I'm calling for the upset. Ooh. Tyler Murray. Kyler Murray is sneaky. 
I'm telling you, he's he's back healthy. He's sneaky. And Philly has not been playing like Philly plays. At they all. Had, right? So, yeah. if we're talking about the books and we're talking about the spread, all the house money is going to be on Philly. Mm. So I'm going the other way. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's bold. That's bold. I like it. I, I love like it. it. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I just we we've been talking about how Philadelphia, um, you know, although the schedule is kind of favorable for these remaining uh, next two weeks, uh, it's still they're they're still going in looking wounded, and so uh, so, so so the Cardinals. Hey, we we were we were big on the Cardinals as far as effort is concerned. Maybe not record wise, yeah. but effort early. is concerned. Yeah, early. Yeah. Yeah. If you go they, back they, and listen to our earlier shows, we were big they're on. All, they're, yeah. all, they're always sneaky. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the Cardinals plus the ten and a half, mm -hmm. and we're gonna take Maryland straight up against Auburn. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey man. Hey. We're gonna take Maryland straight now. Listen. So listen. They're gonna be dogs. Because two is not playing. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. But I like that. I like that backup. I like it's that backup. Okay. And Mike, I trust. And Mike, I trust. Guess what? He's not going to show up at that bowl game not prepared. I like he's right. he's the he's the ultimate uh, coach in preparation, getting his team fired up, ready to go. So Auburn's going to be physical, right? They yeah. can they can be big and strong and physical, but I think Meredith can withstand that punch and uh and take the game. So that's my two team parlay. So <laughs> I love it. We're we're hearing it. We're I hearing love it. it. I love hey, it. Hey, Ratcliffe, uh just to you know, just to piggyback off what Reggie said a couple minutes ago as we close tonight, we're honored to have you on. I, I had no idea, to be honest, when I started delving into your history and your past football and beyond i had no idea how prolific you had been uh and all the things you had done um you know from from high school on up and then and then to put that into you know to book in that with what you've done with the youth football program and then taking that back to the fact that you went to a school that eventually became famous for a, a tremendous Hollywood movie, and then your relationship with with Coach Boone. It's it's been for us. It's been a big treat to have somebody you know like yourself on our on our program, and we really appreciate it. Absolutely, I appreciate you guys having me on, and you know to you know share my little story with the world. And um, you know, I've I've, you know, I've checked you guys out a couple of times. You guys do a great job. Good picks. So <laughs> I wish I would have followed you last week with those uh, those dogs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get it going in the right direction this week. Indeed. But uh, again, we we appreciate it, Ratcliffe. Thanks for joining us, and we hope that you'll do it again. Uh, maybe as we get closer to into, into the playoffs and things like that. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That was Ratcliffe Thomas, Coach Ratcliffe Thomas. That was pretty major. That was pretty major, Raj. What what, yeah, what what are some fantastic. of your um, what are some of your thoughts on that? I I, I loved it. The story about uh, remember the Titans and how he had no idea when he went to see it uh, when he was playing for the Colts. He had no idea that it was about Coach Boone, who was his driver's ed teacher, and <laughs> and and the other coach who was who was the other main character in the movie. Um, that that ended up being his gym teacher. Amazing. You know, and, and and not, you know, so many years before he had them as teachers and at the school. And for him not to have known that, it um, you know, it's just an incredible take on a classic movie, you know, yeah. that uh, that I've never heard before, yeah. you know, from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you could tell, you could tell uh when he spoke on Coach Boone. The emotion, you know, that that was something that meant a lot to to him. So, yeah. so that that was a uh, powerful moment. And and quite frankly, I'm gonna go back and 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 rewatch. Remember the the Titans on the strength of this alone. So, I am too. Yeah. I am too. I yeah. am too. Absolutely. No, that was awesome. That was awesome. Well, um, oh man, man, how how do we top that? How do we top that? Uh, he 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 left us with two money picks. Yeah. Two money picks. Yeah. He he left us with some some money picks. 
the uh, Cardinals straight up. And at the very least, covering that 10 and a half, that is a huge number. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then we got um, uh, Maryland straight up against Auburn. I love that pick, too. I really think Maryland is the better team than Auburn. Auburn has a nice little defense, but I do like Maryland uh, in spite of their quarterback not being not playing. Tonga by Loa, little brother, yeah, not yeah playing. better you, better you than me, better you than me. <laughs> oh, what's the yeah. what's the Jets try coach? That again. What's yeah. the what's the Jets coach yeah. name? I, I try that yeah. again. You tell me uh, yeah. uh, the yeah. Jets coach yeah. name. We can go back and forth. Salah, uh, Salah, saliva. What? Salah. Okay. S- Salah. Yeah. yeah, we can just go back and yeah. forth, effing up but names. G- but give me, yeah, what is it? Two, two, two. Tonga by Loa. Thank you. Oh, um, okay. money, okay. money Good. in the bank. Good. Anyways. All right, what are our picks? What do we got? All right, all right. So I'll go first. Uh, I like the Bears minus three against the Falcons. So I haven't touched the Bears in quite some time. The Falcons, uh, they're not playing. Well, I mean, they're they're still technically in it. They took a they suffered a huge blow uh last week. Um, the Bears, um, you know, I think they're playing for pride. Wait a minute. I believe the Falcons beat Indy last week. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I like yeah. I like I yeah. like the Bears minus three against the yeah. Falcons. Uh the Falcons, they're playing for pride. Uh big win uh last week. Um uh who did they beat? Who did they beat last week? They Indy. Indy, Indy. yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah, that was one of my picks. So yeah. St- yeah. So they're still in the uh, division. Yeah, uh, yeah. Race. So they beat the mustache. But nonetheless, I do like uh, the Bears at home. Uh, the Bears have been playing a lot better. Um, uh, Justin Fields, he 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 still he still um, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's still trying out. He's still trying out for the position, the full time position for the Bears. And so uh, his play has been improved. He's been killing it on the ground. He's been uh, looking good in the air. So I do like the Bears minus three uh, at home against the Falcons. Yep. Uh, give me the Bucks minus two and a half against the Saints. There's something Vegas is seeing that I'm not seeing. Uh, but by all accounts, uh, Baker's healthy. Um, uh, uh, um, the wideout, um, slipping my name. Evans. Mike Evans. Evans he seems healthy. Uh, I, I just think they have a nice groove going, and I think they want to take a full stranglehold on um, the NFC South and dispose yeah. of the Saints. So I do like the Bucks at home um, against the Saints uh, minus two and a half. I believe I, I believe they can clinch this week I, with I, a win over the Saints. Okay, okay, yeah. So pretty so there's sure, a lot on line sure. yep. there uh, for them to to potentially clinch and, and uh, secure their. Uh, position as a, uh, uh, I guess, a three or four um, seed in the uh, NFC. Yeah. And then at least a four. At least yeah. a four. At least a four. And then finally, uh, I like the Lions and Cowboys over the 53 and a half. Um, both of these teams are turf warriors. Uh, both of these teams are high flying, high powered offenses. And these are very stout defenses as well. So, I do believe that the elixir for Dak Prescott and that offense is playing at home. And so I think, again, I think they can put up a big number on their own. I know that golf and the Lions are prone to shootouts. So I do see that 53 and a half, a number that they'll easily surpass and in, 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 uh, eclipse in this game. So give me the Lions and Cowboys over 53 and a half. Book it, Dano, go Roger. You got it. You got it. I like them. So I'm going to go with um, some more um, underdogs this week. Uh, That's been doing me pretty well the last few couple of weeks. Uh, I like the Patriots plus 13. Um, Against uh, the Bills at the Bills, um, the Bills to me have just been playing marginally good. They go to they go to the the Chargers last week 
and win barely by two points yeah. against a team that's yeah. missing their quarterback, has an interim coach, got blown out by 40 points the week before, yep. and you only beat them yeah. by two. And then you're playing the Patriots, who just went on the road and beat Denver, uh, who was in playoff contention. Um, yeah, I see this as, as an easy cover, uh, New England, plus, tw- plus 13 mm. Uh, mm. at the Bills. Um, I'm big on the Raiders uh, the last couple of weeks. I just think that Antonio Pierce makes all the difference in the world for that team. He should be given the head coaching job today. Amen. Yeah. Um and 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 locked up, uh, you know, into a multi-year contract. Uh, the, the you know when you got players that all galvanize behind a head coach like that, um, and start playing, you could see it against Kansas City. They were so tenacious the whole game, offense and defense. I don't know if they have the quarterback position solved yet, but uh, but their guy looked pretty good last week. He held his own. And that defense is something to behold right now. Yeah, uh, anchored yeah. by Mac, Max Crosby. And then, and then I'll also take the 49ers to bounce back. They're going to be hungry, angry, hangry, whatever you want to call it. All the GRYs. They're going to be when they come to play the woeful Commanders, which which hurts me to say. But you know, the 49ers are favored by by uh, 13 and a half. That's two touchdowns. I think that they will have that covered comfortably by halftime, comfortably, and um, and they're going to be they're going to be ready to play. They got a lot to play for. Washington only has one thing to play for, and that is to lose their last two, to to you know to confirm their uh, top three uh, draft pick. So those are our picks. Even with Jacoby Brissett, uh, even uh, with Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> I don't, you know, I mean, we're we're talking about a band aid on a gaping, uh, you know, uh, severed artery. Okay, you know this 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 is this is not uh, this is not uh, anything to worry about. Uh, if I, if I were going to uh, guarantee a pick this week, it would be that one. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Well, okay. well, quick recap. Right, well, I got well, the Bears so minus have, three. Hosting the Falcons, Bucks minus two and a half. Hosting the Saints, Lions over Cowboys. Lions and Cowboys over the 53 and a half. Roger, yours real quick. Patriots plus 13 uh, at the Bills. Uh, Vegas, the Raiders uh, plus three uh, at the Colts. And um, the 49ers minus 13 and a half uh, at the commanders okay okay love it love it we will we will uh, do better than three and three this week i feel it i feel it in my bones so so here we come guys here we come so the damn w the prophets of the prophets we're still here we're in route to giving you another uh over 500 if not perfect week 17 uh roger real quick before we bounce who would play you in the movie Gosh, I, can't, I mean, the first thing that really pops in my head is like Ma- uh, Matthew McConaughey. Okay. You know, I've no, 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 no. Scratch that. Scratch that. Because of comparisons years and years ago, Michael Keaton is me. Uh, Michael Keaton is playing me. Wow. In my life story. Wow. Yeah. I know, I know you can see it. Yeah. I know that anybody. Yeah. You kind of look like Batman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm, ba- I'm Batman. Well, I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Batman. All right. All right. All right. Right. <laughs> That's our show. All right, folks. That's our show, ladies and gentlemen. We enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks, Ratcliffe Thomas. Thank you, Ratcliffe. And thank you, everyone. Have a happy new year. Uh, some of you all will be viewing this uh, post new year. Have a lovely and safe uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, be good. See you in 2024. Enjoy some football. A lot of bowl games. So enjoy. Hope you have some time off as well. Peace. Best of luck. Thanks, folks.